Today on the Scholar Warrior podcast, I'm here with George Monkhouse. He is the scholar of this episode, an award-winning acupuncturist, uh, top 10 acupuncturist in London, uh, working with top athletes, uh, working with businesses on occasion to establish a workplace culture, a healthy workplace culture. Uh, and you help clients with many difficult to treat conditions Indeed. And you help them back to health, back to vitality, and you're also a martial artist. Yes. Yeah. And uh, trained in Qigong. Mm. So you're about health, vitality, performance. Uh, feels like we're going to have a very interesting conversation, sure especially because what we were talking about uh, <laughs> before getting on camera. So welcome to the Scholar Warrior podcast. Thank you very much, Ron. Thank you for having me. Yeah, real pleasure. So I'd like to start with your background, the, you know, the how, the where, the why, why TCM, uh, it's, uh, it's the major form of medicine in China, obviously for like mm -hmm. 1.8 billion people and for 5,000 years, mm -hmm. uh, but not the first thought in people's minds in the West, so, so how did that happen? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, it wasn't on my radar at all, acupuncture, Chinese medicine, really, I had a different life really my early adult life I was in uh, nightclubs in cocktails and alcohol and I was doing very well very young but in order to do very well very young doing uh, many hours uh, working through the nights I was drinking very heavily mm. uh, very poor diet and not getting enough sleep within uh, five years I was on the verge of a of a physical breakdown if you mm -hmm. like I could feel my body saying right we're, we're done now either either you keep going and you're gonna die or it's time to stop drinking so I not only needed to stop drinking which was very very ingrained within my personality but I also needed a new career <laughs> and a new friendship circle by and large as well so uh, my liver and my kidneys ached all day every day for about four or five years after that and <clears throat> I went to the doctor I was already open to alternative medicine I've been helped very greatly when I was three uh, by kinesiology um, so my whole family had become open to it out of necessity and it worked very very well but Chinese medicine as I said was not specifically on my radar <clears throat> I went to the doctor and said, look, I've got pains in my liver and my kidneys. And they said, no, you can't feel your liver. There's no nerve endings in the liver. And I said, well, it's all this area. It really hurts a lot. What, what is here in the body? And he said, well, that's the liver. So I said, mm. okay, how can we fix this? I need to rejuvenate my organs. And they said, no, no, don't worry about that. We can take the pain away, but don't worry about trying to rejuvenate your organs. So I thought, this is, I'm in the wrong place here. You guys are not listening to my, my request. So... That put me, uh, rather than going to other doctors, that put me on a path of uh, you know, alternative medicine. That's what immediately sprung to mind. Initially, that was uh, psychology, psychosomatic techniques, hypnosis, uh, mesmerism, how to affect the mind, how to affect the body through the mind. Mm -hmm. That was very useful, but it wasn't really providing any of the results that I was after. So then I got more into uh, body therapies like massage, uh, nutrition and detoxes uh, and cleanses, and then into energy work, Reiki and, 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 different, um, and different modalities. And really then someone recommended acupuncture to me. I thought I'd got myself into a very healthy state someone says you're not nearly as healthy as you think you are you need mm. to go and have some acupuncture go and see this person i've booked a treatment that day being a really having a really bad needle phobia my whole life right. uh i went uh, uh booked in that day and went along as soon as i could and this guy was reading my pulse and he was telling me about how my heart had grown when i was young because i was very active and very sporty and then I had had a very hedonistic lifestyle and my blood had been polluted. And this whole uh, long story, and I thought, this guy's absolutely bang on with what he's talking about, yeah. just from feeling my pulse. And so he said, right, so what we're going to do is we're going to strengthen the heart, clean the blood, fix the liver and the kidneys. Yeah. And I thought, boom, let's go. And over the following weeks and months, I got into the theory of Chinese medicine and Taoism, and Confucianism and it wasn't just a way to fix my body it was a 
whole lifestyle it was a whole way to live healthier uh, and to keep always in mind balance and harmony mm. which to me just made perfect sense why would you focus on anything else yeah yeah and um, this rings true with, a, with another very uh, prolific uh, Chinese doctor that I had on the podcast which is they're looking for answers for themselves and they just weren't getting them yeah. in the traditional place mm. and so they had to look somewhere else and then take charge of it themselves yeah. and um, you know the thing that strikes me as you're talking is that you know talking about lifestyle and lifestyle is one of the main things in Chinese medicine yeah. I mean if you think about trying to fix someone that has just got the worst lifestyle it just seems like it's just never going to work right I mean, the wheels are feeling up, falling off and you're going to try and give yeah. the, that thing some medicine yeah, I mean, a very common example is migraines, mm. which again was a problem for me. You can have uh, all sorts of drugs that will help to take the migraine away. You mm. can have different oils and creams and you can take vitamins and you can do lots of different things to, to help your migraines. You can have cold baths, cold showers when the migraine's happening. You can have acupuncture. This is like putting a, a plaster on a gaping wound. If you don't mm. take out the triggers of the migraine, then the migraines will just keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back. Mm. So coffee is generally the main trigger for migraines in most people. Take the coffee out and you'll probably get rid of the migraines. They mm. might get headaches, there'll probably be more lifestyle factors that are at play, mm. uh, but you take out the triggers and the symptoms go away. Right. And that is the primary medicine before needles, before vitamins before anything yeah. yeah so one thing I found interesting reading about your history was um, the f like there was, a, there was some family issues mm -hmm. that that were reoccurring and they're not they're not happening anymore yeah they're not happening anymore uh, both for my sister and I yeah so where exactly do you draw the line did we just not inherit it or did we inherit it and the genes were never activated? It's not entirely clear, but certainly uh, my grandfather died at 54 from a massive double stroke um, and had a couple of heart attacks before that. My father had uh, a stroke on his 60th birthday. So he was dying very young yeah. on, on, my, um, on, my, on the male on side. The male side. Yeah, and that was from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a condition in the heart where one of the muscles in the, in the left ventricle of the heart that pumps the blood around the body uh, has muscle that thickens up and so it can't pump effectively. Mm. It's very much a genetic condition. It generally develops in the mid to late 20s or early 30s. From my experience as a baby, then my sister's experience as a teenager, we, we needed to sort our health out. Yeah. There were some, some serious issues. And we sorted our, our health out, and neither us nor our children have inherited heart problems. No, that's great. So uh, it's difficult really to identify the cause, but certainly we both lead very healthy lives, and that mm. seems to be reflected in our long term health. And so uh, that, that kind of is on the issue of genetics and epigenetics mm. that, that I read. So something can, in the environment or in the lifestyle can trigger that thing to come into play. Precisely. I mean, if you look at the number of genes that we have, people have a pretty disposition to uh, many beneficial attributes, to many skills that they will learn easily uh, if they have the right environment. And at the same time, very many detriments that can become activated if they lead a less, uh, a less beneficial lifestyle. Mm. So really, the, you're born with genes, that's your DNA, that uh, dictates how everything will be replicated, but ultimately your lifestyle is probably more important right. because you can, you can minimize everything. It depends if you if you have some blood-borne disease like a sickle cell anemia, which is, you know these these cultural diseases which run very strongly through a certain uh, uh, skin color or through a certain geographical location, then you know you're going to have to be working with that. But some people it's going to be a major uh, impact on their health, and other people it's going to be relatively trivial, mm. and that will be diet and lifestyle. Right. 
That also, uh, coming back to your personal story, I, I was reading eczema, allergies, used to be a thing, mm -hmm. not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, taking out, well, there are many ways to look at diets really in, in, in the modern world and healthy diets, you can talk about uh, alkalinity versus acidity. Mm. Um, you can talk about a, a paleolithic diet, there are lots of ways to look at it. Ultimately, if you're eating natural foods, foods which have not been messed around with too much mm. by humans, by and large, you're going to find that they are very easy to digest, they're very nutritious for the body, and they're not going to cause side effects unless massively overconsumed. Right. So that's that was a that was a factor in yourself. Yeah. You're, you're you're a whole food guy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And then you also uh, have a history in qigong and martial arts and mountaineering, and this is all part of the lifestyle. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, if you stop drinking. Which is such a cultural norm, yeah. And I didn't want to just be in the environment where everyone else was drinking because I was trying to stop myself drinking mm. to save my life, effectively. So I didn't go to to nightclubs or bars anymore. I didn't have a drink with with friends. I would yeah. go to the pub; that would be okay. But as soon as everyone started getting drunk, I lose complete interest. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it became well, how how do you get your thrills? How do you get your 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 highs, if you like? Yeah from adrenaline by and large, right. go up a mountain, climb a mountain, uh, yeah, jump out of an aeroplane, uh, go and do something that is going to, is going to really get a, a strong feeling of vitality and enjoyment from life. Yeah, and I, th I think this is a common thing for a lot of people in the UK who want to do something healthy and they want, you know, they want to meet their friends mm -hmm. and the only context for meeting friends is alcohol. Yeah. Or family, even yeah. a lot of the time, yeah. uh, it gets tiring. If you so, you know, how do you you manage that? When sometimes when I'm meeting old friends, I will try and think of some activity, anything but going down the pub. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so yeah, that's a thing to manage. So you took you took up just different stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, also rather than uh, having some sort of intoxicant or inebriant that is going to be of short-term pleasure but probably longer-term uh, disappointment yeah you drink you have a great time you have a hangover in the morning mm. and that's going to probably your hangover is going to last longer than your enjoyable time yeah. whereas I wanted to flip that around and have uh, it well potentially have a, a, a quite uh, frightening or threatening activity to do yeah. but then once you get into it it's going to provide long-term benefits right yeah. okay so um, that's the background. Then I want to jump into the art. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of arts that you practice, but mm -hmm. I suppose the context of, of this discussion was more traditional Chinese medicine. Yeah. But we, we can segue all over the place. It doesn't, <laughs> really, indeed, yeah. doesn't really matter. Um, so there's five components of TCM, acupuncture, herbology, twina, which is the physical manipulation, the body work, mm -hmm. nutrition, and qigong, or you know, lifestyle and exercise mm -hmm. and such. So why acupuncture? Why did you? Well, acupuncture for me, the idea that, uh, you know, I never really wanted counseling. When I was having a hard time in my late teens and early twenties, yeah. I didn't want counseling. There's no disrespect to counselors or hypnotherapists or psychoanalysts or anything, mm -hmm. but I didn't want to have people picking around in my brain. I didn't thought, who are you <laughs> to pick around in my brain? I didn't know yeah. your qualifications. Uh, and, so I didn't want that, and I didn't want to provide that role for other people. Right. So what was so appealing to me about acupuncture is you can stick a physical needle into the physical body, you can stimulate mm. the nervous system, you can stimulate, uh, improve blood flow. That's going to change your hormonal balance, it's going to change how your nervous system is conditioned, mm. which means that your emotions and your thoughts are going to be... Uh, you will be able to choose much more how you react to situations mm. than how you are naturally uh, compelled by experience. So to be able to help some of the mental and emotional issues just through inserting a needle into the body yeah. is supremely appealing to me. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. And uh, Again, uh, I'm thinking of comments from Ken Rosen, the, the other TCM uh, uh, exponent that I spoke to. And... Uh, 
you know, he was saying a lot of people have this misconception that, oh, I've got backache, let's go to the acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. uh, he feels that, um, you know, one of, the, one of the things that acupuncture is most effective with is mental and emotional issues, mm -hmm. which people may, may not be aware of. Yeah. But it's fantastic for that. Yeah. I mean, really, I would say... Uh, there are many ways. You don't have to have needle therapy. Chinese medicine is so good at having all these alternative ways, like breathing techniques. Mm. You know, just have a rather than sticking a needle in, you can have a breathing technique. I've got this yin yang breathing technique that I teach, which is very simple, quick, and easy. It's basically just a refinement of smooth, deep breathing. Mm. And within twenty to thirty seconds, people who do this technique well can completely reset their mental and emotional state. Yeah. And then, yeah, the emotions can come back in a while, but it's giving you complete clarity of mind. There's no theory, really. There's no uh, method that you have to get train your thoughts into a particular way. No, you just breathe, and you focus on smoothie breathing, and the mind just calms down. Yeah. Very quick, very simple. Very effective. Very fast. Yeah, very effective. Yeah. Very effective. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the really fantastic things about experiencing acupuncture myself is that it um, it triggers something. I mean, uh, I practice qigong. I, when I'm laying down, I can feel I can feel movement in the body. I can feel qi flowing to a certain area. But it does this fantastic thing where it just it just just sends you into a state of. I mean, I don't know quite how to explain it, but it reminds me of. Um, do you remember that uh, Crocodile Dundee thing when he's doing yeah, that? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where he's going to that yeah. huge ball, and it just, yeah. ugh, it just, it just turns off, and it's like it's time yeah. to relax. Yeah. It's time to heal. Yeah. And uh, it's just, I haven't experienced anything else like that, where you put in needles and turn off the light, and you're left, and you feel like someone's just turned everything off. Yeah. What is going on there? Well, it's a really interesting question. Yeah, uh, when you insert a needle, I mean, people talk about qi flow, the, the concept of qi has been slightly um, disturbed. Maybe, maybe we can come back to that. But ultimately, you're sticking a physical needle into the physical body. Uh, you're going to cause a healing response in the system. If, if you get a bee sting anywhere on your body, mm. your body is going to respond and send uh, the uh, immune system from the blood, white blood cells and platelets to the area to come and repair. There might be an inflammatory response as many healing processes that can happen. Yeah. If you sp stick needles in, particularly uh, in specific areas of the body which are understood to be connected to other areas and it, through diagnosis you find that those other areas are imbalanced, you insert a needle, you're going to get a very strong response up through the nervous system, back up to the midbrain, mm. which is... Uh, sending a message saying hey listen we want to restore blood flow and and strong nerve flow all the way through uh these channels mm. the midbrain will often shut down sufficient blood flow which means uh sufficient oxygen and nutrient flow as well right to an area you can get very aching back the blood can be very much congealed there mm. you can get needles and stick them into someone's ankle stick them into their wrist as long as it's in the right area and you will get instant pain relief mm. that is uh, helping the uh, functioning of homeostasis you know, right. which is which is the self-balancing self-regulating mechanism in the, in the body mm. helping it just to work better you're just giving the body more power to do what it was naturally designed to do right and through lifestyle people are probably not getting the opportunity to be in that state enough anywhere near enough they may actually never be getting into that state yeah that rest digest yeah repair kind of state yeah there's also there's also the fact that when you got needles in you're not going anywhere right? <laughs> yeah. so you've you, got to stay there yeah yeah and also psychologically you're coming to the practitioner you've got some problems and you don't know quite how to fix them and you mm. come to someone who says i know what i can do i know exactly what to do you psychologically psychosomatically you're saying to yourself ah i'm 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 looking after myself. I'm going right. to someone who knows what to do and I've, I've got faith that they, they're probably going to be able to help me. Right. All of that is having an effect just to calm the nervous system, to calm the body, to calm the mind. Mm. And really it's from that state, as a lot of people who meditate can confirm, that that very relaxed 
slow brainwave state is not only very peaceful but highly therapeutic for the body yeah very very much so um chronic disease <laughs> so you deal with a lot of people with chronic disease yeah yeah so what what are they getting um which they're not getting somewhere else what are they getting from me yeah they're getting they're, they're getting uh, radical life-changing uh, uh, results right if you look at Western medicine Western medicine really developed over the, over the last hundred you say 150 years mm. with surgery drugs antibiotics this sort of thing it's really come a, a long long way and it was absolutely brilliant at dealing with the big problems at the time mm. which was public health so infection yeah um, and then also you know very uh, acute problems like someone's got a bone sticking out you don't go to your acupuncturist no. you go and get some surgery yeah you know, they used to in China they used to do bone setting yeah uh, so um, I've just got a little bit lost with the segue chronic chronic diseases chronic yes. diseases they're coming to you yeah so the western medicine it, it, it's not really fixing chronic diseases the big uh, diseases in the world cancer heart disease diabetes obesity mm they are not being fixed by drugs and surgery. Yeah. Surgery is far too late a stage. Really, they are chronic because they've built up over time. Mm. So the best remedy is, what has, well, the, the, the best remedy is, is recognizing that these things have built up over time because of diet and lifestyle. Right. So if you not only provide treatment which is going to stimulate the body to heal quickly, mm. but then also you take away the triggers that cause the chronic disease in the first place, and people can have long-term health, either to manage their condition or to completely reverse it. Why do we have such a hard time saying that, that it's a lifestyle and diet thing? Because, I mean, in the, in the Western culture, because it's a hard way, I mean, when you see someone grossly obese, you know they're gonna be diet, it's a matter of time before they're diabetic, but we can't just say, you, you're doing something drastically wrong in your life. Yeah. Well, we can say that. Uh, a, people are... are do, you, do you say that to people? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very, very blunt. I mean, okay. And if they come to me, they're paying me money, I'm going to yeah. provide what I feel is going to be the most value. Right. Um, but also, I'm not here to waste my time either. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's difficult for people to change habits. It's not just that you're eating the wrong foods. It's that you've got an emotional attachment to eating foods at certain times because you're feeling not good enough in some way or because uh, of some sort of tr uh, traumatic previous experience. Hmm. You know, it can even be a, a, as trivial as someone saying you're not leaving the table, your parents saying you're not leaving the table until you finished everything on your plate. Right. When is you might be full. Right. But then you've been conditioned to eat too much. Right. You know, so yeah. that sets up a lifelong pattern that needs to be undone. And you can have surgery which is going to shrink the stomach. That hmm. can be effective very invasive but mm. it's very effective any method really which is going to take away the triggers of obesity is, is is really what i'm interested in so chinese medicine i do practice chinese medicine but ultimately i practice medicine right. how effective is it mm. and, and how invasive is it does it come with side effects preferably it comes with no side effects whatsoever talking about invasive uh tr traditionally chinese are not really eager to slice you open. No. Why is that? Because it takes a lot of recovery. It's a lot of trauma. It's it's a uh, it's a trauma in itself which yeah. needs healing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you imagine heart disease, the biggest killer in the world, and of course, if you get old, you're going to have heart failure. If you die of natural causes, you'll have heart failure. So it does skew the results a little bit. However, heart disease is a massive killer got a good friend who is a heart surgeon mm. in London and he gets very frustrated that he has to treat the same person twice in 10 years maybe twice in five years sometimes even three times in 10 years for uh, coronary artery blockage you know which is a lifestyle thing which is a lifestyle thing so yeah. he gets frustrated why does he get frustrated because he recognizes that he is the final stage yeah and when people come to uh, a cardiologist for a consultation they'll be told, yeah, we're going to schedule you for surgery, eat less salt and do a bit of exercise. And that is the, the, the care right. that is provided. Right. There's very little guidance. So, you know, 
people just don't know and then heart surgery becomes the standard medical treatment right they've understood in China because this medicine was so well established before drugs and surgery before modern western medicine uh, we should say that they did they also had surgery as well they had like yeah, they, the first surgeon yeah but they it wasn't what they chose to do yeah I mean you have to consider that Western medicine, when, when it developed, what we call now Western medicine or modern medicine, it replaced what we had before. Right. We started hearing about old wives' tales. Mm. Old wives' tales were cultural wisdom. Mm. In China, when, when this Western medicine was brought in, it didn't replace Chinese medicine. Yeah. They said, ah, oh, that's a new type of medicine, let's incorporate that. Yeah. So they had very effective systems that didn't need replacing. Mm. They had better systems than we had. And so now we're starting to understand that Western medicine is very good for infections, for uh, acute conditions, but it doesn't work for chronic conditions. Now, as Ayurveda and Chinese medicine have had for thousands of years, we are developing that in the West, which is termed functional medicine or integrated medicine, which right. is dietary and lifestyle medicine in the modern very good yeah. we, we, I mean it's very clear if you look at statistics that that is exactly what we need you yeah. know uh, how we can be in you know these incredibly wealth wealthy incredible countries mm -hmm. and be suffering from things which are, are just they seem quite fundamental yeah. it's uh, it's quite interesting mm -hmm. so more power to you in that respect Thank you. Um, you, I mean, we had some messages before I came here, and you said tribal medicine, venom, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> diet. Yeah, well, we were mentioning that it was a great passion of mine. I was involved in Amazonian medicines, uh, mm. which a lot of people are aware of nowadays, all around the world, and have yeah. often experienced. I was was very involved, still very involved with Cambo, which is mm. uh, a non psychedelic medicine. It is. Um, the secretion from the back of an Amazonian frog, which right. has been used throughout the Amazon, Bolivia, uh, uh, Colombia, Peru, Brazil. Um, so yeah, what and does it do? So what, it's a very strong physical purge. You burn points on the skin, traditionally okay. on the arm for a man and a leg for a woman to begin with, yeah. and you scrape off the dead skin, and uh, you apply the secretion from the frog, which has dried on a stick, uh, to the underlying skin where it gets filtered by the lymphatic system so it's no longer a poison or right. a toxin but it's a very strong natural medicine without side effects. Imme immediately you start to feel this strong pulsation. Mm. So your blood pressure goes up, your uh, you get a, a pulsation particularly in the head. It's very uncomfortable, it's very intense and then after about 20 minutes or so you start to purge the vomit. Right. which is just water because you would have fasted beforehand it is really uh, like a, a whole body acupuncture treatment if you like it's a whole body mind acupuncture treatment it's very uncomfortable but like I was talking about with this sort of uh, anti anti intoxicant philosophy it's horrible to do but mm. it makes you feel amazing right. long term it really helps just clean and strengthen your body it helps really just nourish your vitality. Everything that I, I do with Chinese medicine is very much in tune with how this frog secretion affects us. So would this be particularly relevant to people who have a lot of toxins in their body? Yeah, I mean really for uh, anyone who feels the calling, you know, who feels mm -hmm. the, the interest or who just feels internally that this is, this is calling them. It's it's a, a super, super uh, powerful way to to uh, optimize your system. Right. I can't remember the answer to the original question. <laughs> I was it? asking you about tribal medicine. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what you told me about. And the, uh, the venom. Yeah, that is, the the, venom, that is venom, right? Well, that's a poison, actually. Venom is in, injected. So uh -huh. it's a more aggressive approach, whereas poison is, is um, uh, either touched or ingested. Yeah. Right. But venom, so I started working with this, with this frog medicine for a number of years. And I, I started exploring other ways that animals and plants have been used mm. in a similar way that um, pharmaceutical drugs are used to create a very strong, powerful effect in a short space of time. Mm. And I started looking into venoms. 
Uh, Looking over there, there is a scorpion. There is a yeah. yeah a, there is a scorpion off camera. Yeah, scorpion <laughs> it's not alive. Yeah. yeah. Well, scorpion I haven't seen it face. move. It maybe. No, no, not there. Um, and so I started looking into scorpion venom. I found this Cuban scorpion that was uh, a free medicine because Cuba have a, a free healthcare system. Mm. It was a free medicine for over thirty years in Cuba for cancer treatment right. for eighty percent of tumors. You have the pure scorpion venom diluted with uh, distilled water, 30 to 1, have five drops every 12 hours. And even there was a, a case with a, a boy, a 10 year old boy who had a brain tumor which was covering 60% of his brain. Mm. And he couldn't name a color, he couldn't ride a bike, oh, he couldn't God. hold a conversation. I mean, it was really dire. And within 18 months, he was riding bikes, he was back up to the level that his schoolmates were at school. Wow. He had a, I think that the tumor was down to a five or three percent size of you know, the So, of his brain. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, again, the other guy, uh, the, uh, Ken, who I interviewed, he was big into bee stings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, great, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he, so he's um, interviewed often on that topic of bee stings. Uh, so what is it, what is this venom doing? It's obviously stimulating something. Well, it's the same as immunology, uh, as vaccinology. You know, if right. you if uh, well, it can work in various ways. This venom in particular, scorpions sting their prey. They also use it as a defense, but ultimately, venom is, with a scorpion is to feed itself more than to defend itself. Right. So it is a pre-digestive acid. It is full of uh, toxins that are going to break down impurities into amino acids, into simple building blocks of energy. Right. So simple building blocks of matter. But generally we'll leave what is nutritious already in place. Okay. So you put that into the body in a controlled dose that's not too or, or a controlled manner, so it's not too painful or not painful at all. And it is very, very good at locating impurities. Cancer is an impurity, is an accumulation of deformed cells. Mm -hmm. You uh, allow the the scorpion venom to regularly access the site of a tumour and it's just going to eat it. Right. That is fascinating. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Yeah. As well as because it's a neurotoxin, it's going to come into the body, your whole body is going to have a, a immune response to it, it's going to strengthen the immune system. It's going to help all round all round health and, and vital functioning. Yeah, it's very, very interesting. I that's the first I've heard of um of uh, scorpion. Uh, venom being used like that it's not it's not a very common thing yeah. no, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a GP just yeah. whip one of those out yeah. um, let's talk about athletes you also work with you know elite level athletes so yeah. what are they coming to you for well Is it injuries yeah I mean you know, primarily working with MMA fighters who mm. are getting injuries left right and center training through injuries not you know, starting training before an injury is properly healed mm. also quite frankly MMA is a very emerging sport um, and, so and mixed martial arts which anyone watching this will know about I'm yeah. sure yeah uh, a lot of people are, are not are generally not uh, educated in in health in healthy diets and these are supreme athletes supreme performers and they really need to be conditioned to be able to um, optimize the, the use of their body, optimize their, their recovery time, and to feel mental strength. You know, I can help with all these things. We work also with instant pain relief. Mm. So when people come with a problem, and if they've been injured in training, I can, if I can see them immediately, we can very quickly give them strong relief and their symptoms, as well as looking at long-term, again, diet and lifestyle. How to make sure so there, there's many many aspects why someone would want to be interested in that yeah it's not just a medical treatment it's yeah. very much the guy the people that I get involved with it's very much about uh, I'm looking after their health right so like like maintenance health yeah. yeah maintenance of, of high performing people yeah very cool and the businesses as well how, how does that work so do you do you can you come in I know that you're also trained in feng shui which is very yeah. interesting to find out yeah so um which again has probably been uh, slightly misrepresented, you know, yeah. in Western media. People think that it's just uh, you know wearing a robe and walking around with a compass and stuff. But there's some very obvious and practical 
uh, issues with that. So if, yeah. if you go and work with a with a company, it, mm-hmm. what what are you doing when you go and see them? Well, I work with with, with Nick at Ipsack, who you know, right. interviewed as well. Uh, mm-hmm. So we'll go in there and and look at the overall productivity, look at how the environment is set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to make sure, for example, that they're spi- uh, inspiring images around, mm-hmm. which are symbolic of the principles of the business. Yeah want to make sure that the dynamics between the people are working well and that uh, people enjoy who they're working with. You often spend more time with your colleagues than you do with your family. So yeah. to make sure that people are happy, to make sure that the food or the eating area, if they're not supplying food to their staff, is conducive to relaxation and to uh, conversation and to sociability, mm. really. Uh, we work with the senior management to see exactly a lot of uh, senior man- managers once they're promoted they can be very nervous they can feel really out of their depth so like, I yeah. might to control a 30 man team so we can come in and help support them with treatment as well and support staff with not just acupuncture treatments with uh, tai, tai Chi and Qigong classes mm. um, look at all, ex- all aspects of the health of the business very very cool so before we move on to stuff I, I think you know we, we'll work on some nuggets that people can incorporate into their life you did mention and I have read also on your site that you've got a big vision yes. of global um, free healthcare how's, yeah. how's it going to work well global free healthcare that sounds like an outrageous uh, audacious plan yeah. yeah and a lot of people think it sounds silly but I mean as far as I'm concerned I don't know the exact details of how it will work yeah just that uh, I'm on my path I'm completely on my power I'm on my way and I'm yeah. coming through <laughs> <laughs> get out of the way but ultimately it's about creating an a environment an infrastructure and a culture that fosters yeah health and the reduction of symptoms uh, you do this by it is best done by uh, yeah, changing the environment. Mm. I remember there was a, a, there was a case in, um, not Malta, where was it? Um, Mauritius, where they had bad, a big problem with heart disease, with mm. cholesterol. And they thought, how do we get people? We need to get people off canola oil and we want to get them onto soybean oil. So how are we going to do that? And they hired experts and they thought, um, you know, we can, we can put together an education program and we can try and engage the community in the end, they got an epidemiologist who looks at what epidemics and, and public health patterns mm. and said, no, 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 don't do any of that. Just massively increase the income tax for canola oil and massively reduce the income tax yeah. for soybean oil. Easy. Job done. Wow. Yeah, so looking at ways that you can change, change the culture, change the environment, change the infrastructure. Yeah, the culture is big, right? If, you can, mm. if, you, if you've got someone at the top just managing the culture, everything mm. else kind of takes care of itself uh, yeah. one of those things that I've kind of noticed happening in in the UK and when I was in Asia uh, you know from a young age say about 18 I noticed that I'd walk around you know the parks of China or wherever and there were there were gyms there were outside gyms mm-hmm. you know with these walkers and there'd be 80 year olds and 90 year olds down there swinging off bars and yeah. they were all together these these older people mm-hmm. And they looked in wicked condition, better than you know majority of people in the West uh, that, that, yeah. that I see. But the gyms were there, you know, and they were used. And I, it's only recently I've started these things happening in parks now yeah. in the UK. Now there's like workout yeah. areas. Um, so so yeah, you don't you don't uh, you still don't see even though you have you have these wonderful outdoor free gyms. Yeah, you don't see. Uh, classes in the in the early morning like you're doing. No, in, in no, in Asia East. you've got all the teachers around as well. Yeah, well you yeah. can have an 87 year old, four foot eleven woman who can mm. throw you five feet backwards with yeah. their Tai Chi skills. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And they, they, this is what I mean about culture. Yeah, it's the same in Cuba. They have uh, flamenco dancing. Right. So you can go and connect with your community, whether you're six mm. or whether you're mm. eighty. You can go and talk to probably a doctor on site as well. Mm. It's just a whole understanding that our, our daily habits are what dictate our health. Yeah. If you've got a lot of health problems in society, you need to change the daily habits. Yeah. So uh, that is, is really the way to do it. Then leading from there, I mean, we're, 
uh, working on a, building a, an app on the blockchain at the moment, a healthcare app, which mm. will be able to evaluate much better what practices, what uh, treatment styles, and what diets, uh, how effective they're being on a grand scale. Oh, that would be through, good. Through statistical analysis. So that could be a, a big way to lead into the free healthcare. Yeah, that could be very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, it's um, those are very good ideas. It'd be great if we could get uh, something like the Parks of Asia happening in the UK. Those, those are hilarious. Have you seen the, you get to see some real wacky stuff down there. Yeah. People running backwards and smacking themselves in the trees, playing yeah. the trombone. Yeah, why not? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so um, getting onto stuff for uh, you know uh, maybe relevant for our listeners. I was mentioning to yourself that one of my uh, passions with this Scholar Warrior uh, podcast is is to promote really good ideas, you know, for people, you know, like us or mm. young people, middle aged, whatever, whatever. But when it comes to uh, guys our age in the UK, I keep on seeing this statistic that uh, you know that suicide is the biggest killer of mm. people our age, yeah. and so of men our mm. age. So presumably that's also anxiety and depression. Mm. So from your perspective, what's going wrong, and from your perspective, what should be changed? I've got a very good friend who's just had the, the worst year of his life and uh, thought that he was going to be uh, ending his life last year. Oh. And he's turned a corner. He's in love with life now. But what is it? You know, there, there's obviously a hormonal balance. If you look at emotions in the uh, in the body, they are hormones and neurotransmitters. So the reason that we have unwanted emotions is... Uh, away from the overall organism and we're just a consciousness we're just a conscious man you know we're, we're not there when the body's sleeping um, we're not the whole body there's a, there's a much larger organism at work and so the the emotions work very much to give us an indication of where we are now in relation to where we want to be mm. yeah, and, and how suitable where we are now is in relation to where we want to be so emotions are, are, are very valuable but in modern society where there's lots of pressures which are causing symptoms, you know, lot of, whether it's from the environment, whether it's in relationships, whether it's in the education system or through diet, you know, there's a, a, a multitude of factors which are impacting on our health in a negative way. Mm -hmm. So it's not surprising that our emotions, emotions become very disturbed and it can be very difficult to find an easy way out. And it can be a very long-term strategy to find a way out. Right. So, I think really these these problems come from an an inefficient education model. Really, we we are we uh, are forced. Most of us are forced in a schooling system, at least in the UK, to uh, fit in to the system that mm. is there. No one tries to evaluate your specific skills and to help nourish and support those. You come and do things this way. If you're not, you're an idiot. If you are, you're very clever. It's not a valid system. We can see that when people leave school, I was reading about some guy on, on uh, only way is Essex who didn't even get any GCSEs and now his shoe company made four million mm. pounds last year. The standard education is not a true indi indication for uh, your value to society mm. so I think as soon as we start basing education and culture around uh, providing as much value as possible then things will, will, will change uh, more and more and more through time that could that could help so on on that uh, you know referring back to what we're talking about uh, lifestyle um, and in Chinese medicine that's called yang shen Mm -hmm. Correct. So that's a health. That's health through lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, what are the big basics that you would suggest that someone could get get a hold on? Yeah. Yeah. We're not gonna we're not gonna try and fix them from top yeah. to bottom. We don't know. We don't know what people's issues are. But what are some big basics people could try and tackle for, and benefit for, from? Yeah. For my style of Yang Sheng, it's all about cleaning and strengthening. So right. homeostasis is the self-balancing, self-regulating mechanism that sustains life and health. Mm -hmm. That is uh, 
assured to a process of accumulation, strengthening our system, mm -hmm. and also letting go, cleaning our system. When you strengthen too much, you start to over accumulate and you cause problems with stagnation. Mm -hmm. Things like, again, things like chronic diseases, heart disease, cancer, obesity, diabetes. When you clean and cleanse and let go too much, then you start to develop uh, issues of um, malnutrition, uh, infection, mm -hmm. uh, te your temperature might drop too much, uh, if you die of, uh, of hypothermia. Uh, homeostasis really keeps us alive, keeps us in balance, and the better that balance is refined, um, the, the, the more joy and more vitality we'll experience. So cleaning and strengthening the system, whether it's through um, uh, what we're drinking, how we're breathing, what we're eating, how we're managing relationships, doing what we're passionate about. Yeah, there's, there's more steps in the, in the program, right. but ultimately, clean and strengthen, clean and strengthen. Cleanse and build, clean and strengthen. Exactly. So, so if you have that as a guiding principle, yeah. you're going be doing, you're going to be doing better. Yeah. Um, if listeners, after doing, after listening to this podcast, if they did one thing in terms of their health, vitality, what, what, what should they do? What would you recommend? Learn to breathe smoothly and deeply. That is a very good advice. Yeah, as your natural breathing pattern. Make sure that your natural pattern becomes smooth and deep. Smooth and deep breathing, um, which will have the benefits of... Regulating homeostasis, <laughs> cleaning and strengthening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Optimizing vitality. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> to learn how to breathe. That's strange, when I, was, when I was writing that question, I was thinking, oh, that is quite a difficult question. What would I do? Yeah. And then I would say, I would say, do Qigong, learn Qigong. Yeah. So it's, it's very, I mean, yours is actually more accessible. You know, breathe. Well, I'd say it's the most first. basic Qigong. I think it's at the yeah. basis of all Qigong, healing, generally standing, you know, mm. jam jong, standing practice and, and, and breathing, mm. good breathing. Um, but then also, uh, no, no, that'll do. That'll do. Uh, <laughs> well, chi, chi, chi ultimately is is breath. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, gets translated as energy. It's not an accurate diagnosis. You won't find any Chinese dictionary dictionary translating chi as energy. It's a very good translation, but it's misleading. It has become very misleading. So, the idea that chi gong is actually breath work, mm. um, and then you can have movements which help the breath move around the body, the oxygen move around the body. Right. Think well, but, I mean, they, uh, that's a good example of how it's difficult to translate, right? Because mm. you're saying move the breathing around the body, and, but moving the latent oxygen around the body. Which is in the blood. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you're not, I mean, if, it's, if, if the oxygen is not moving around the body, then you're stagnant, right? And you're going to die, ultimately. <laughs> yeah. Oxygen is life. Chi is life. Yeah. yeah. If there was one traditional Chinese medical concept, or actually any kind of concept or mm. uh, yeah idea that, that people should uh, think about after this podcast what would you suggest I mean actually I mean breathing is a, uh, you know long breathing is a good idea to go away with thinking but in yeah. terms of a concept or an idea yeah uh, what I loved about Chinese medicine was that you know the, the whole concept is about balance which is based on yin and yang mm. and uh, harmony which is the, the, the five uh, influential forces if you have balance and harmony, you will experience vitality. Mm. That really, for me, uh, well, those are the key, three key words of my business, balance, harmony, vitality, mm. uh, and they encompass really the tremendous wisdom that's been passed down and refined over the uh, millennia. Very cool. So I'm gonna, I've got some bonus questions that I'm gonna fire yeah. at you. I shouldn't have yeah. told you before, but yeah. <laughs> there we go, it slipped my mind. Yeah. So these are, you know, they can be a bit quicker to answer or not, doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the last thing you watched on TV and you enjoyed? Ah, Narcos. Narcos, okay, I've seen yeah. that come up on Netflix, but I've never... Uh, yeah, I'm not a big TV person, but yeah. Narcos, yeah. If you're gonna be a criminal okay. and you wanna be top of the game, well, look at Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, oh my God, that's an unbelievable character. Yeah. Apparently he had so much money, it, it would rot. I mean, yeah, like he had yeah, rooms yeah. of it. Yeah, sixty million dollars a day. I think they were saying <laughs> in nineteen eighty-four. Yeah. God. Um, 
a good book you'd suggest? Tao Te Ching. The Tao Te Ching. Any particular translation or penguin or anything like that? It's a very contentious issue among those in a, in a uh, you know sinologists, people who study mm. Chinese. Uh, I am not going to put myself in such a compromising <laughs> position. Just read any of them, read all of them. Right. Yeah. Any so the Tao Te Ching, which is you know the foundational Taoist work, yes. but I mean that that work influenced lots of stuff, yeah. medicine and martial yeah. arts and the whole of Chinese yeah. thought really and culture. Yeah. 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 Uh, the funniest thing that's happened to you recently? Funniest thing that's happened to me recently. Hmm. <laughs> funny, there's been some funny things there's definitely been some funny things but they're not there now they're not coming right now <laughs> okay. <I'm not> <laughs> uh, what's inspiring you at the moment uh, total focus is inspiring me uh, people you know like to do uh, self development courses business courses there's one particular business course I did a couple of years ago um, that really encourages you to cut out distractions. Mm -hmm. What is serving your big goal? What is serving your 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 major passion? Or for me, was it was serving my life goal, this global free healthcare initiative. Uh, being on Facebook, being on media, being on social media, uh, doesn't really doesn't serve me at all unless mm -hmm. I am doing it for my business. So don't just go on social media. Um, you know, eat foods which are going to make you feel good don't eat foods which are going to make you feel bad have total focus aim everything towards what is most wanted mm. that's what's most inspiring me and, and that concept came from a course that you did yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah very cool well thank you so much for coming on the podcast thank you for sharing your wisdom your knowledge um, you're welcome thank you for inviting me yeah yeah and I think yeah. I think there's there's a lot of stuff for people to masticate there and, and take away and do something good with and uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I know I benefited from that a lot good. so thank you very much thank you. cheers <laughs>